Hello and welcome to this edition of Exeter Explains. I'm Dr. Steve Gandhi. I'm going to talk today about functional safety assessments. And what is a functional safety assessment and why it is important? So under the IEC 61511, there are five recommended functional safety assessments that should be performed, two of which need to be performed. They're mandatory. So if we consider the safety life cycle for a moment. The safety life cycle has the three phases. We have the analysis phase. We have the design and implementation phase. And we have the operation and maintenance phase. And as we know, with the functional safety life cycle, it's not a once and done. There are things we have to do to maintain it, not just after it's been designed and installed. And what governs all of this are two things. We should have planning, a functional safety management plan, which is how we're going to ensure functional safety throughout the entire life cycle, not just for each phase, but the overall life cycle itself. And that also applies to when we come to have to do any modifications and how we handle management of change. And also what is covering this is functional safety management or FSM as it's called. And part of FSM is to perform functional safety assessments. So what is a functional safety assessment? Essentially what a functional safety assessment is, it's an independent, and here's the key word, it's an independent cross-check on safety to make sure that we have what we need from the point of view of functional safety. So that's what it's for. Now, what, what is the benefit of doing that? The purpose of doing it is, do we have sufficient safety, but also to help us identify and fix any potential systematic issues before we go too much further. Because the further down the life cycle we go, the more expensive it becomes to fix problems, the more complicated it becomes. And of course, that has a financial, potential financial impact. So according to IEC 6.15.11, we should be doing our first functional safety assessment here, FSA 1. And what comes out of this analysis phase is the identification of the process requirements, the corresponding hazards that are represented by that process, and the subsequent risk it, it exposes us to. In other words, risk is going to be the consequence, the magnitude of the consequence, how bad is it going to be when it does happen, and balance that with the likelihood. How often is it going to happen? And we do this in comparison to a tolerable risk. The company will define a tolerable risk that it wishes to meet, and part of the process of coming through here is doing our hazard and risk analysis and determining whether we meet the tolerable risk. Do we have sufficient protection in place? If we don't, then what other means do we need to implement to be able to reach, reduce that risk to our tolerable level? And this is typically where we will be looking at a safety instrumented system with its safety instrumented function. And then each safety instrumented function will be designed to achieve a certain amount of risk reduction to meet our tolerable risk. So 
we perform this analysis, we determine if we need a safety instrumented system with safety instrumented functions and what the SIL targets need to be for the safety instrumented functions and we distill all of that into what's known as a safety requirement specification. So the first FSA1 is really to make sure have we captured everything properly in the SRS and do we achieve safety? So if we've missed anything, if we've misinterpreted the requirements in terms of the, the risk reduction, if we haven't performed the SIL identification properly, if we've missed particular hazards and things like that, we should be able to pick that up at this point here before we go any further. Because as I said to you, the two things a functional safety assessment provides us with. Number one, that independent cross-check. So it should be somebody or an organization that's qualified, competent to do the work and is not involved in this stage. And typically end users will turn to third parties like us to help with that, but they can do it internally themselves if they have sufficient independence. And the other part of that is the systematic. And typically systematic, we can characterize systematic as the three Ps. And the three Ps are very important because the first one is people. Do we have properly qualified and competent people to perform the work. And the IEC 61511 puts a lot of emphasis on competency now. The second one, procedures. Do we have written procedures that are being followed? This is another problem. When we analyze accidents, oftentimes there's going to be violations of procedures because accidents typically happen either at startup or during maintenance. And most of the time, they can be traced back to systematic issues, one of these three. And the third one is paperwork. Do we actually have a paper trail to prove that we are doing what we said we were going to do. Or not, as the case may be. So this is the other part of the functional safety assessment. Do we have what we need from safety point of view up to this point before we go into doing the design and the development? If we are OK with the functional safety assessment one, we can proceed with the design. And typically, at the end of the design phase, we will do a functional safety assessment too. And again, we're looking to see, have we done everything right here? Have we followed the SRS? And as well, if were there any recommendations or findings from the first FSA that we should have taken into consideration before we go into this stage. And then before we start up, we have to do an FSA 3. After the commissioning, installation and commissioning has been done, we have to do an FSA 3. So this is the first mandatory one according to IEC 61511. And the purpose of this, of course, is to make sure the as designed, installed, and commissioned, SIS and its SIFs meet all of the safety requirement specification. The same thing. Do we have what we need from safety? Do we actually achieve safety? Do the safety instrumented functions perform their tasks properly and achieve safety? And are there any potential systematics that we may have missed, according to these three. So for example, since this is the first mandatory one that has to be done, 
If we didn't do functional safety assessment one and two, we still have to cover those areas. And here again, the purpose of doing this is before we start up, before those process hazards are present. And the other thing to bear in mind with this, if you're not self-insured and you fail an FSA 3, you better check with the insurance company to make sure that they're going to allow you to start up. Or they may say, no, we're not going to, we're not going to allow that. Because if we fail this, then something is broken back here. And we should not start up. So this is the first mandatory one that we should do. And then after some period of time in operation, we should be doing an FSA 4. This is the other mandatory requirement. And the purpose of this is because the IEC 61511 is a performance-based standard, not a prescriptive standard. Some of the older standards were prescriptive. What do we mean by prescriptive? Well, prescriptive is where it says, this is what you have to do, and then it tells you how you have to do it. There's no leeway, there's no flexibility, it's got to be done. NFPA 85, double block and bleed. Whereas with a performance standard, it still says this is what you need to do, but it doesn't tell you how to do it. All it says is that you can do it any way you want as long as you can prove you're meeting your original design requirements and your targets. So in other words, we have to be able to compare to key performance indicators because it's a performance-based standard. So if we're not looking at our performance, how do we know that we're still maintaining our original design targets? So the FSA 4 is another mandatory requirement. And again, the standard doesn't tell you how often to do it. It says it needs to be done after some period of time in operation. So we need to be able to look at our performance metrics. And we can get a lot of the performance metrics from the SRS, such as the proof test interval, the mean time to restore, the mean time to fail safe, the spurious trips, the demand rates, and so on. So we can measure and see, are we achieving that? And again, the other purpose of the doing this is to also see, have we introduced any potential systematics as we've gone through here? So if we're not documenting our proof testing, for example, if we're not keeping track with our maintenance, if we're not tracking our useful life, we're going to have problems. And again, if there are failures, if we do detect failures through the proof testing, have we done the proper analysis, which is the root cause analysis? So we would need that evidence. And being able to track our performance is very important. And the last functional safety assessment is the FSA 5. So FSA 5 is if we determine that we need to make a change, we need to do a safety impact analysis on the change. And it has to be done by somebody who is independent and competent to do the work. To see, okay, what is the impact on, of this change on functional safety? And where do we have to go back to in the life cycle? And again, this would be part of our functional safety management and planning. So we would go back to the relevant stage of the life cycle. We may end up having to make a change to the SRS, for example. So all of that is very important to follow. And as I always tell people when I teach the classes, the functional safety assessments are there to help you. They're there for a reason. They give us that opportunity to, at specific key points to be able to take a step back, see, okay, have we done, ever, done everything correctly? Have we actually achieved functional safety? And, oh, by the way, were there any potential systematics that we were able to pick up and detect? So that's the reason why functional safety assessments should be performed, why they're important, and the benefits of doing that. 
I hope you found this interesting and if you'd like to learn more please reach out to us here at Exeter. Happy to help you in any way you like. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Bye for now.